got is Carl Brown from Guitar Lessons 365.com. Got a great one from Rat today. We learned how to play You're in Love. So we've always got a lot of cool riffs when we're dealing with Warren Martini, Robin Crosby, just some Stephen Piercy too. He does a lot of the songwriting. So this is a really, really great, um, fun riff, simple riff to play. Um, and then um, a not so simple solo to cover as well too. So we got a lot cut out for us today. Before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already, so you can ring the notification bell and uh, then be notified when I release a new video. And so you can like and comment on help me out here on the YouTube madness. Um, and if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube or anywhere on the internet, um, the best way to do it is actually join my Guitar Academy. You'll see a link to it in the description below. That link will give you a free seven day trial to my academy. And my academy contains all of my guitar courses covering everything from complete beginner courses to more advanced stuff on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone, and to get personalized support from me there. So please go check it out. So let's jump into the track. We're in drop D tuning here. So just take a standard tune guitar, take the low E string, down a whole step to D. And you're good to go. All right, so we do have a couple of different things going on here in the intro. We have uh, Robin Cross, you would come in and do these like kind of powered chord hits throughout the intro. Um, and then he will take over the rhythm guitar part at when uh, Warren Demartini goes in and, and starts doing his like kind of first opening solo. So we're going to start here with really the main riff of the song. All right, so it's basically you're going to hit, um, hit this D major chord. So the you know, fifth fret on the A string, but then just comes bar across the seventh fret of the D, G, and B. So if you do this in recording, they do get a lot of. You hear the, the notes on the B string too, so it's like oh, it sounds like a really heavy rip, but it's all major chords. But uh, you get a lot in that there. So obviously he's accenting the really the, the lower strings, but you do get that high note in there. So. It, so you're just hitting that chord, then a couple hits on the low D string, and hit that chord again, then a few hits on the low D. So wait. So after you hit that chord, you're just killing it, right? So don't let off the string. This will be in, uh, like that. Just kind of release the pressure. So it's four hits there. The second. So once one, one, two, one, two, three, four. And then jump up here, same chord shape, two frets higher. Um, and then a couple hits on the low D. And then go down here to the, the same chord shape down here to the third fret. And then more hits on the low D. So we had a. All right, and then kind of start over that D, but then instead of going up to the seven and then the three, it goes down to the second fret. So this one, you can just play um, just the, the second fret there on the D, G, and the B. And still hitting the low D in between all the stuff. And then go back to that uh, C quarter. Third fret there, so it's the chord shape we were doing earlier. So we have this so far. Now from here, just really pretty much in the intro, you might hear him a couple couple times do this in the song. He does it a lot more live, but when you hit this chord, he kind of he hits it again and hammers on five to six on the B string, and then back down to the chord. So this, so this. All right, and then you just kind of do the riff again. So like sort of the same, but here we just don't do that little, little ending there. So the kind of, so Warren Demartini is coming in with this riff and he's just doing that main riff twice with that little fill just after the first one. So we have this. So from 
there, he's just gonna take this down. So he's gonna come down here to the uh, B flat. He's really just kind of hanging out of the power chord, B flat power chord, so you don't have to get that note. You can if you want, but so we're just kind of really kind of uh, a little bit more aggressive picking on this B flat. So just that chord shape move down to the first fret. So I'm going back, kind of palm muting and hitting that the uh, first fret there on the A string. Now here. When I see uh, Warren and Divertini play this throughout the years, this part right here, he'll, he'll he'll vary it a little bit. So back when this was originally recorded, though, there's kind of a, they're doing this kind of big stretch. They move up, just still hold the first fret on the A, but move up here. Now you can't just the, grab the fifth fret on the D, or just try to borrow the fifth fret across the D, G, the B, but. But you probably just want to just do the two bottom, the, the first fret on the A, fifth fret on the D. It's just a little bit easier. We're going to add the note on the G string, but it's, yeah, obviously it's a big stretch right there. And then we're going to jump up, hit two hits there on that C chord. So we have this. So. Now, when I see them play this live more recently, he kind of, he, he starts, he goes back and hits like a different chord back here, and then while the other part is just playing the C power chord. Uh, but um, that's not what's on the recording, so we're going to kind of stick with it. So it's kind of like that, and then they go back to start the main riff again. And when they get down to the third fret, they go back to the B flat again. All right, so now we have some something going on by for Robin Crosby. So we have Warmer Demartini coming in with that just the, the, at the very beginning of the song, and then when the vocals come in right there, you have Robin Crosby comes in with some hits. It goes. So he kind of just accents a few of the chords. So he comes in and starts that first D, just kind of slide off that D power chord, really. And then you hear kind of hitting that chord a couple more times there, just going along when they come back around to that chord, uh, Warren D. Martin does in the riff. And then at the very end of the riff, when, when we hit this, those two hits on the C power chord. Um, that's also the so Warren D. Martini and Robin Crosby are double on that. And then he, he uh, Robin Crosby just goes into the actual riff, plays the whole riff. And that gives Warren D. Martini an opportunity to come and do that uh, solo, which is you hear him do this type, this kind of it's more of a fill he's doing. Um, because he repeats it throughout the song here. So it looks like this. All right, so we're gonna start with these unison bends here. So this is at the 10th fret on the high E string here, and then the 13th fret on the B. So you're gonna pick those together and bend that note up on the B string until it matches the note on the high E. We're gonna do that same thing at the 12th fret. And then the same thing in the eighth fret. Do this. And then back to the tenth fret. And then we get to this lick, which slowed down looks like this. All right, so that's gonna start with the tenth fret on the high E string. Then thirteenth fret on the to ten. Gonna pull off thirteen to ten on the B. Over to 12 on the G. Then do that pull off those three notes again, pulling off 13 to 10 on the B, over to 12 on the G. Then you go, so you basically, then back to that 10th fret on the B string, and then back to the 12th fret on the G. So we have this.
And then you're gonna pick this 10th fret there on the G string with a pinch harmonic. And just bend it up a whole step there. And that's that lick. So you're gonna see that a few times. It's always kind of the same thing. All right, so I just wanted to let you know what's going on there. And so whenever we hit that fill, nothing new to learn, just kind of repeat the same thing again. All right, so then we get through the uh, the verse, which is obviously kind of the, it's where it's like this verse, pre-chorus, and chorus. They kind of all blend together because the verse really is the chorus as well too. So anyway, so let me just play this whole section real quick. So this is after the um, that little fill there, and we get to the official verse with this. <laughs> riff of playing the main riff there's that that same solo happens again with those unison bends so it's basically that same main riff so when the first verse comes in which is that same main riff played twice After you've done that twice, you're gonna go from that last chord there down to the B flat part. And then back into the main riff again. This is kind of like the intro, just going straight back down to the B flat. So we just basically did uh, the main riff twice and that B flat section twice. And then we get back to the main riff here. One. Um, so coming out of that, this back to that same riff was kind of the main riff over with that, you know, that fill going on over it. And then we get to what I just kind of call it the bridge, just because it's so different than the other riffs. And it's kind of like, uh, actually, was there, actually, there maybe there wasn't, uh, who knows. Anyway, so it just goes to the bridge. <laughs> Back to riff. So this is pretty easy. Now, you, when you see them play this live, they kind of don't do the. I don't see them doing the full shape, getting the note on the B string there, but that is in the recording. So, um, if you want to make it sound like the recording, so basically we have the. It's, it's just a G power chord. It's at the um, fifth fret there on the D, seventh fret on the G, eighth fret on the B. So you, you pick that chord, slide up two frets to the seventh fret. So you kind of hit the chord, then the open A string, and then back. So it just so I basically just kind of slide it from five to seven. That G power chord to the A power chord. So it hits on the A string in between. And then when we're going back at the very end of the riff, we're gonna go back to, we're gonna just, it takes us back to the main riff, which is just a double stop here. The fifth fret there on the G and the D, then six on the D and the G, and then that takes us to start the riff over. Remember, when you have that chorus riff, you're gonna, you hear that coming in a lot, and it's the same thing that we covered before. All right, so we kind of go through all the sections again. After that, um, we get to the, then we get to the uh, the actual guitar solo itself. So a bunch of riffs that we've already covered. Um, so the solo is over the main riff, except 
when you get to that B flat section. Don't do that. Yeah, fancy stretching there. All right, so let me play through Warren Demartini's solo for you real quick, um, and then I'll show you how to play it note for note. So here we go. All right, I love Warren Martinez guitar style. It's just very, very cool. All right, so this first section, we're gonna start with this. So that's gonna be a bend at the 20th fret. Holstat bend and release at the 20th fret on the, the high string. Just pick it again when you release the bend. Then we got this really cool lick. All right, so that lick is gonna start here at the 17th fret on the high E string. Over to 19 on the B. Then you're gonna pick 20 and 17 on the high E. Slide that 17 down to the 14, so here this. Then play 15 on the B. Then we're going to play 17, 14 on the high E string. Slide down to 10. Then we have 13 there on the B. And then you're going to play a pull off from 14 to 10 on the uh, high E string, then pull off 13 to 10 on the B, then uh, 12 on the G, back to that 10 on the B, and now the 11 on the G, so we have this. A lot of vibrato on those notes. Then we have this to end it. So that's sliding into the seventh fret there on the D. And then play five on the G. Then a whole step bend of the seven. Then you're gonna hammer five to six on the B over to seven on the G. All right, uh, next phrase. So, we're gonna play uh, seven on the G, and pull off to five. So, pull off seven to five, then go back to the seven and hit it twice. And pull back off to five. Over to seven on the D string. And then there's a slight pinch harmonic on the note, and then you're gonna bend up this, just kind of pull it towards the floor, a whole step, and release. And then we have this, which is gonna be pull off seven to five again. Then go back and hit that seven a couple times. Pull off seven five, seven a couple times. And what you're gonna do now is go hammer five to seven on the G, then play six five on the B, back over to that seven on the G. So what are this? All right, next lick looks like this. So 
So that's going to start with a couple of bend and releases at the, um, well, with a bend at the 13th fret of the B, release, and then bend it back up. And then you're going to start the, kind of the descending lick, which is going to be. So that is on the, the uh, 10th fret of the high E string. Then pull off 13 to 10 on the, the B. You, got, you kind of do that 13 to 10 over to 12 on the G again. We did that lick earlier. We're going to do it twice again. Then back to the uh, 10th fret on the B string. Then pull off 12 to 10 on the G. Then you're going to go over to the 12th fret there on the D. And then roll to the 10th, the 12th fret on the G. And then do a slight bend of the 10th fret there on the G. So we have this. Then you're just going to descend. So that's going to pull off. 12 to 10 on the D, and then a quick slide from 12 to 10 on the um, A string, down to 8, back to 10, slide back up to 12, and then we're going to have 10, and we're 12, pull back up to 10 on the D, slide down to 8, and hold that, so it is. The next lick is really heavily palm muted and kind of buried in the mix. So uh, sometimes you got to kind of listen to some stuff that he did live, way back in live, because, you know, it's going to change things up after, you know, 30 some years. But um, we basically have. So that's really heavily, uh, after that, that initial three notes, it's really heavily palm muted. So that's what I'm kind of getting out of it. So we start here with just a hammer pull from eight to 10, pull back off to eight on the uh, D string. And then we're gonna go eight, 10, 12 on the A string. And then play eight, 10 on the D, uh, back to 12 on the A. And then we're going to play 8, 10, slide to 12 on the D, over to 10 on the G, and then back to that 12 on the D. And that's really when things can, you can hear really well when it gets to the 10th fret. Kind of a couple of half step bends at the 10th fret on the B. Then we have this little melody. So it goes 12, 11, 12 on the G, and then slide it down to the 7 on the G. And then we have this, the end of the soul is this. All right, so slide into the 11th fret there on the B with some vibrato. And we have this. So that's going to be play the start of the 11th fret there on the B string. Hammer 13, pull back off to 11, slide down to 10, over to 12 on the G. Then go back up 10, 11, 13 on the B string. Then you can play 10, hammer 12 on the high E string, down over to 13 on the B. Then back to 10 on the high E string, and then pick 12 and hammer 13 on the high E string. 
good. Right, do you get to that 13? Well, you just basically slide into the 17th fret and do a half step in and release. Just let it ring. And then the end, very end of the solo. So that's going to be 20 on the B string, back to 19, and then quick hammer uh, 19 to, tw to 20, back to that 19, and then into a bend at the 20th fret on the high string. All right, so really fun solo, just got some really cool licks in it. Um, just kind of goes all over the place, but. Um, Got some licks you can really kind of lock into, and then some really slippery legato licks. So it's a, it's a lot of fun to play. Um, so coming out of that solo, though, uh, we have kind of an extended um, bridge. So it's kind of just a little bit longer. It's got twice as long as the previous. <laughs> So I also had an extended ending there. So you're just basically doing that same riff. Just keep going with it, twice as long. And then at the very end, we're gonna do. So now this, on the recording, it doesn't sound like they're really hitting a lot of the lower, like the lower bass notes in here. It start, sounds like it starts out at this very end of that riff, that little transition there back to the main riff. It sounds like it's just double stops at first. So like the second fret there on the D and the G, then the fourth fret on the D and the G, and then the fifth fret on the D and the G. Then it sounds like they do full power chords. And that would be the, then it follows, it follows, so we have this. And then we go back to the open A, full open A power chord. Then up to the third fret, the C chord. Then up a fret. And then up to the fifth fret, and that starts the riff over. So this. All right, so coming out of that extended bridge, we just have that main uh, chord, uh, riff again, kind of for most of the song, rest of the song as it fades out. And there is an outro solo there. I don't really do these types of outro solos. It's it's kind of pointless because it's so buried in the mix. It's just underneath all those chorus vocals. Even though at the end you can hear, just as it's fading out, you can hear some really cool licks going on there. Um, but it's just not really worth it to try to tackle that entire solo when it's you just it's really difficult to transcribe kind of stuff like that. It's got so much stuff on top of it. But hopefully the main solo will be good enough for you guys. Um, but it's got some really cool riffs in it. A really fun solo. So uh, doing rat songs is always kind of really fun. It always got some killer riffs, and obviously the solos are just off the charts. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.